So this is the third installment of the dining room makeover. Remember in the first episode we went through and we stripped the wallpaper from the walls. Second episode we went through and we actually wiped down the walls with trisodium phosphate and that was intended to get any sizing or glue that was on the wall off the walls so again see what was left, do some repairs for any cracks that were there, uh, but then also took the opportunity to wipe down the woodwork as well. And I found that was in kind of a rough shape. You'll notice behind me there's some uh, red dots. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. And you see the rest of the wall looks like Swiss cheese. I'll explain all of that as well too. What we found was when we stripped the wallpaper off that half the room, the walls were in great shape. It's the old horsehair plaster, so it's the laths and that horsehair, the brown coat, and then the, then the finish coat on top of that. It was in great shape. A few dings, some holes from where the previous owners over the years had hung pictures but there are also some spots where the plaster was actually cracking. So if you actually pushed on the wall, you would actually see the plaster move. And while we like kind of the antiquity of the, the crackled finish, uh, we definitely wanted to fix those cracks because we don't want any of the plaster to eventually fall off the wall. So that's what the red dots are and what the holes are. Let me show you what it looked like before that. So before we put the red dots and the bindings on the wall, you'll see there's lines coming through the wall here. And what these lines are just pencil lines that I put in the wall that represent cracks that need to be repaired in the wall. So I need to do some research, find out what the best way to repair the cracks were. And they definitely have um, these things that are called plaster anchors that you can use. You kind of sink them in and then plaster over them, but they're very difficult. And I'm not a master plasterer by any stroke of the imagination. So more research online. I actually found this product that is called Big Wally's Plaster Magic. I was a little bit skeptical, I did some more research on it, and I found that there was an episode of This Old House uh, where Tommy Silva had gone in and actually repaired a wall um, at, a, at a person's house, and the walls looked very much like this. A little bit of what comes in the, pro in the, the pack as you buy it. Now, I, I purchased the homeowner's pack. I actually bought two of them. I kind of wish I bought three because I ran out, so I need to get some more. But what you get in the package is first off, you get a conditioner. You actually get the, the glue set. And I bought extras of these, but you actually get these washers. Um, and they actually, what the washers do is they actually act like clamps. Let me bring them a little bit closer for you. So it's basically just a clamp, plastic, has an inch and five eighths or inch and three quarter drywall screw that you put through it. And that's what you see on the walls. So the process itself is actually pretty simple. You want to go out and you want to buy, if you don't already have one, a 3 16 inch masonry bit. And the purpose behind the masonry bit is you find your cracks and then you drill your holes on either sides of the cracks. Purpose behind using a masonry bit. If you use a twist bit or any other type of a normal drill bit that you would see, when you hit the lath behind the wall, what would happen is it would actually drill through the lath. You don't want that. You want the masonry bit to hit the wood and stop. What, you'll, what I found is the laths are uh, probably about an inch and a half, two inches thick, about a quarter of an inch in between each one. So every so often you'll hit a dead spot and we always just go right through, just skip that hole. But basically what you do is you drill your holes alongside the crack, you then use your conditioner, spray in the hole, probably two or three good shots. You want to have a wet sponge on hand because then you wipe down the wall uh, because that stuff does drip and it does run and it's tough to shoot this through a 3 16 inch hole. Let that sit for 10 minutes. The conditioner behind the wall, my guess is, the understanding is, is to get any dirt or any crud that's on the laths off, but then also make it a conditioner to accept the adhesive. One trick I found with the adhesive was on the this whole house video, they said, put your tip in, measure it, and cut it. I don't suggest that. The stuff is very liquidy. Um, it's not like heavy caulking. So I cut a very fine tip on the end of it, and then one good shoot, release your, release your caulking gun. Shoot, release the caulking gun. And again, it will squirt out because you're hitting the lath here. 
what's happening, and I highly recommend checking out Big Wally's website as well, he's got a great tutorial on it, is the glue actually drips down between the laths, and then when you apply and screw on these clamps, what you'll then see is you'll actually see the glue ooze out the holes. You then let that sit for 48 hours. So it's a little bit of a long process, not instant gratification. But it was out of the walls, you wipe it down with the wet sponge. I didn't do a great job of one of the walls wiping it down so I can actually see some sizing from the, from the adhesive on there. I'll, I'll get that off with sandpaper. But let it sit for 48 hours, take out your clamps, and when you take them out, you actually take out the uh, drywall screw. Many times you'll see the red clips stick, and then all you want to do is use a putty knife. Get it up underneath the red clip, and it pops right off. Um, the clips that I used, you can actually see they're reusable. You may have to clean some plaster or other stuff off of them, but it did an absolutely great job. Um, the true test will be this spring when we have the house resided because the contract will be actually banging on the outside walls. And if this holds up to that, then we know uh, that the big wall is the good stuff. And I'll do a follow-up uh, commentary on that to see if it covers. So that was it for the walls. So we've got, uh, let me kind of do a circle here for you so you can see. The very first wall had just a small area that needed to be done. Second wall had quite, quite a few more. And then the main wall that faces the house had quite a few. And then I ran out of the Big Wally's adhesive, so I'm gonna contact them tomorrow and have them ship me a couple more bottles. There was a place in Boston, because um, it's only sold in a few places uh, in stores, but in Boston there is a not-for-profit organization uh, called the Boston Business Reservation, um, Renovation Group, or something like that. They're on 100 Terrace Street in Boston. Absolutely fantastic organization. Um, went in there, drove up with my wife the other day, purchased the pack, we actually went through their warehouse um, of a material that could be purchased. It's um, Folks donate their materials. There were sinks, there were doors, windows, all kinds of uh, cabinets that you can get there. So we're gonna keep that in mind for the future. But absolutely great place. I highly recommend you looking it up. Uh, and I'll get the exact name and I'll, I'll post it on it to the YouTube video. But it was a great, great place to go. We're now members, we'll keep going there. And uh, if I don't get the stuff online from uh, Big Wallers, then I'll shoot back into Boston. So the next thing that we did uh, after the walls, uh, kind of with the, the red uh, little dots, is we went through and we started working on the woodwork itself. So the woodwork was in pretty good shape, but as you can tell, there were years of paint on the woodwork. And we kind of went through, kind of the red shows through a lot, uh, but digging through, I've actually seen both red, I've seen some blue, all kinds of colors. So the process I went through for that was I scraped off any loose paint that was there, then I went through with 80 grit paper, and then I also went through with 100 grit paper to get it as smooth as possible. There's definitely gonna be some alligator in this there, what I'll do is, what I couldn't sand out, I made sure that I feathered out so that I can come back over it later on, get a primer coat on there, and then I'll go through with some wood patch and get it as smooth as possible, especially in the corner areas and where the, the style trim meets the sills. So that's our status right now. Uh, I actually have to go back to work, uh, so I can't work on this. Um, I will be trying to do some more episodes uh, during the week at night because I want to get the rest of this wall done and get this wall done as well too and then finish up the uh, sanding down the little work. My objective uh, is to be plastering one night during the week and then uh, get a couple coats on next weekend to cover my Swiss cheese and then longer term to be able to actually get some paint on the wall the weekend of the 14th or 15th of January. Uh, the one upside to working in here is you saw the halogen light earlier in the video. Halogen light heats up the room great. Our temperature right now is six degrees with a minus nine wind chill factor. So it's actually pleasurable to work in here. I don't have to wear the heavy coat. I can actually work in a t-shirt and it's nice and warm. So more to come. Uh, that's the third episode. It's a wrap. And uh, do me a favor. Please like it. Uh, please subscribe. There'll be more videos to come. Thanks.